these are Amazon's three best-selling laptops. Actually, I lied, it's Amazon's four best-selling laptops, so let's take a look at them today. Before I begin, I want to clarify everything. So Amazon has this list where they rank the best-selling laptops and they're updated hourly. So chances are that the rankings that I have right now for this video aren't accurate, but they are accurate as of this date. I'm gonna unbox all these laptops for you guys today, but afterwards stay tuned for some comparisons of the performances, webcams, and speakers. So let's get started. Let's start with number four, and this is the MacBook Pro. You may have noticed that on the ranking, the fourth place does belong to the MacBook Air. I actually don't have mine available today so we're gonna have to go with the second best thing well actually an upgrade and it's the pro so this laptop actually is a little pricier obviously it starts at $1199 as opposed to the $899 of the air but it has a lot of neat features and it also includes the same processor that is in the air which is the M1 uh, it's incredibly great for performance and for productivity so I definitely recommend it if you're looking into it uh, as a student so opening it up, the screen is really nice. It's a, it's a very bright screen. It can get really, really bright at around 400 nits if I'm not off. While also being better than an average screen, an average screen is around 1080p. If we look at the actual build quality of this thing, it's very thin. It has your two Thunderbolt ports. So that's really nice while also being quite light if I'm being honest. Obviously for $11.99 you should be expecting a lot of this but let's take a look at some of the cheaper options that are actually the best sellers on Amazon because I think we might have a couple of surprises there. While I'm opening up this box I wanted to mention that all the laptops in this video excluding the MacBook Pro start at $400 or less so it's actually really affordable so if you like anything I would definitely recommend looking into it and buying one. I also wanted to mention that Amazon has a 30 day return policy with their laptops so you're really not losing anything if you want to try one out here we go starting with our third ranked laptop we have the asus vivo book 15. one thing that is promising about this laptop is that it has an intel i3 10th generation which is obviously not the highest end cpu possible but for a 400 dollars option it seems like it might be pretty good so you're getting the asus logo on the back pretty basic. Laptop does feel pretty cheap off of initial impressions, but it does look like you're going to get most of your basic ports, which is really great. HDMI, USB-A, headphone jack, micro SD, and your charging port, and two more USB-A's. So that's really, really great for students because you're going to be able to connect external devices, monitors, keyboards. It's something you're not going to get out of the MacBook Pro because you need dongles. That dongle life is hard, man. You don't get a camera shutter, which is on some of the laptops I've reviewed in the past, like the HP Envy, which you should definitely check out it'll be in the corner the screen is clearly 1080p it's not that bright it's probably going to be around that 250 nit to 300 nit range as for the configuration you're getting 8 gigabytes of ram which is pretty neat and 128 gigabytes of storage again at this price point i do like seeing those numbers given the configuration this looks like a good laptop for productivity not much else. You're not going to really be able to game on an Intel i3 10th generation besides very light gaming. But if you just want to crunch out some essays, you want to get some PowerPoints done, you want to watch some YouTube, it can work really well. Probably wouldn't recommend it for college, but I would definitely recommend it for a high school student that doesn't have a laptop provided to them. Otherwise, you're going to probably want to spend a little bit more money if you want something to last you four years or beyond. Last but not least, with the Asus, you get this charger that's 45 watts. In about 15 minutes, it's charged to a third of the laptop's battery, so it's pretty good. At number two, we have an HP Chromebook. It's an 11 inch option. It comes with four gigabytes of RAM and 32 gigabytes of storage yeah not that good okay initial impression is that this laptop is really really small which should have been obvious with it being 11 inches let's see if it passes the one finger opening test yeah no it's 160 dollars what am i expecting yeah pretty much a school issued computer that you would see all across the u.s so Yay. You're not gonna get any gaming out of it, but you do have that webcam for Zoom, so it's all around uh, so far. Initial impressions with the screen are pretty good. It's a 720p screen, so nothing special, obviously, for the price. It's an LCD panel, so the viewing angles are pretty good. Another neat thing about Chrome OS is that every Google application is optimized to work on this and open up really quickly. For example, if I try to open up all these applications, they'll open up almost instantly. So that's a great benefit for students if all you want to do is 
basic productivity. Last thing I want to mention about this laptop are the ports. You have a USB-A on this side. You're going to get a USB-C, micro SD, and a headphone jack. So just about every port you need except an HDMI port. And at number one, drum roll please, we have another HP Chromebook. Yay! So obviously this comes as no surprise. We're talking about the best selling list, meaning that you're gonna find all of the laptops that are cheapest and most affordable because it's most likely aimed at students who are in high school, not necessarily college students. But there are some benefits to this one over the other one. Number one being is that you have a larger screen and that's it. At least you get an Intel Celeron. It's not a great CPU, but for the purposes of a Chromebook, it's gonna serve its purpose. So let's take a quick look at it. So what I'm getting from this right now is that this is probably the exact same as the other one, just a larger configuration of it. And yeah, pretty much. It looks exactly like the other Chromebook, just larger and a little more neat because the trackpad is larger. The actual keyboard layout seems to be identical. The port situation also looks similar. I think you get one more USB-C. Otherwise, everything looks the same. You have a 720p panel LCD, and you're also gonna get a webcam just like the other one. Let's turn it on and see how it fares. While I wait for the 14 inch Chromebook to charge, there's a couple things I wanna talk about. Starting with the charger for both laptops, it's the exact same. You're getting a USB-C 45 watt charger, so it's pretty nice. You're gonna be able to charge your laptop pretty quick. And that's what I've been able to do with this one that is fully charged now. I left it charging for around 20 to 30 minutes fully charged. And for $50 more, it seems like a pretty good deal in terms of having just your basic Chromebook for school and productivity. Now that I've shown you the exteriors of all these laptops, I want to compare the speakers, the webcams, and finally the performance. Hi, I'm in my room now. So for the speaker test, there are going to be a couple things that are going to stay the same. Number one being that all of the laptops are going to be set to 50% volume. And number two, I'm going to be increasing them steadily to the same beat. It's actually a beat that my brother produced on his channel. Link in the description. All of this is in an effort to make it easy to compare the laptops to each other. So let's begin. Okay, so the MacBook was head over heels better than all the other laptops. That's mostly due to its price point and the engineering, so I'm going to scrap it and only focus on the top three. And out of those top three, my favorite was the VivoBook, particularly because as you raise the volume of the laptop, the clarity was not lost. Meanwhile, with the Chromebook, some of the clarity was lost as it got louder, so I definitely picked the VivoBook. Now let's move on to the webcams. This is the M1 MacBook Pro's webcam. It's 720p, so it's the same as the VivoBook, but it looks better because it has improved image signal processing that are on all the new M1 Macs and the audio should also be the best. This is the Asus VivoBooks webcam. First impression is that it's 720p. As for the audio, well you're gonna have to judge for yourself. This is the HP Chromebook 11 inch. I have a light shining straight at me so it's gonna improve the quality a little bit and for all of these you're gonna have to judge the audio for yourself. This is the 14 inch Chromebook and I think it looks the best out of all these laptops. Hopefully the audio does the best as well. Last but not least performance. So the MacBook Pro blows the other the laptops out of the water, particularly because of its M1 chip from Apple, followed by the Vivo Book, and then the 14 inch Chromebook, and then the 11 inch Chromebook. This order makes sense, especially since it correlates with price. The more you're paying here, the better performance you're getting. But out of the three cheapest laptops, I would definitely go with the Viva Book, not only because of the screen size, but the performance is the best out of those. And the Intel i3 is pretty solid for productivity, especially if you're a high school student. And that'll be all for today. If you enjoyed this video, consider liking and subscribing. And until next time, adios.